Hello everyone, uh, good evening. This is Mr. Alan for tonight. Uh, again, we're gonna have your Facebook Live on nursing prioritization and also delegation. I just wanna make sure that everybody can hear me. So uh, please uh, make a comment that you can hear my voice for tonight. Uh, we're gonna be uh, doing a Facebook Live on nursing prioritization and delegation That's what I have said. So before every, uh, anything else, uh, my name is Mr. Alan Matus. I am a nurse educator and also the, uh, the president of Matus Nursing Review and our online and class academy as well. So for tonight, I have prepared some questions for you, uh, which is uh, all about prioritization in nursing. Okay, so uh, I would like you to uh, make comments, uh, answer the questions, and uh, also share this uh, Facebook Live with your friends, uh, nurses, uh, so that they will learn something as well. And again, the uh, focus of our uh, program for tonight is going to be about uh, knowing the principles and the strategies in uh, delegation and prioritization. So you don't need to memorize the answers. The most important thing is for you to know the, uh, the concept or the approaches on how to answer the questions properly, okay? For sure, you will have questions on prioritization and delegation in the NCLEX because uh, this is under the uh, test plan, which is the management of care or the coordination of care, all right? So before anything else, I would like to uh, welcome some of the people in the group, okay? So we have uh, the following people. So we have Aurora Fiesta, hi, uh, good evening to you. Aurora, I think it's your first time for tonight for our Facebook Live and thank you very much for being here tonight. Uh, we also have um, Jem. Uh, Jem also is my student uh, in the live class and she's taking her NCLEX RN exam soon. So thank you very much and nice seeing you here tonight as well. Then we also have uh, uh, Mervin. Thank you very much for responding to, uh, to my question. You know, if you can hear the sound because I wanna make sure that you can hear me tonight because uh, we're going to have a little bit of discussion. I have prepared very nice questions for you, everyone, and I hope that uh, you will be learning a lot tonight. All right. So we also have, let's welcome some new people for tonight. Uh, we have uh, Bindo uh, Jose. Yeah, hi, uh, Bindo Jose. Uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. And thank you for buying my book. Uh, if, uh, if you don't know, also, I am an author. I have published my book in Amazon. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to be discussing a little bit about that later on. And a lot of students really like the book. Yeah, so, Some students would say in Facebook that it is a, uh, a lifesaver because uh, it's very simple and direct to the point. And also, yes, yeah, so I'm excited, Emma. So thank you very much for being here tonight. So thank you. So make your comments, guys, and then we're going to put that uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the screen, okay? So we also have uh, just a few more people. So we have also, uh, of course, we have Loretta, okay? So Loretta, thank you for being here tonight as well. Uh, you have been contacting me and you've been asking me joining this Facebook Live tonight. And really, I really like it because a lot of people have been waiting for the Facebook Live and I really like that outcome, okay? So before anything else, everybody, uh, without further ado, let's proceed to our agenda for tonight. Okay, so for tonight, before we start, of course, don't forget, okay, we have the contest for tonight, as usual, we are giving away a uh, free 90-day online access NCLEX review. So this will be for uh, anyone who will be able to answer the question tonight, the first one to put the question or the answer in the uh, comment section. So that will be free 90-day online access review, and this is equivalent to... Uh, $129 in our uh, online NCLEX Academy, okay? So we will see who will be winning the uh, online access for tonight, okay? All right, so before anything else also, I would like to, uh, to uh, um, discuss this very important part of, uh, of the NCLEX. And I think that some students uh, are not aware of this probably of the, uh, the Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning. And uh, the NCLEX is an ex examination that you need to understand because um, if you just go there and take the examination, uh, you will be confused and you will not be able to pass the exam if you don't understand first the mechanics of the examination. And there are certain items that you need to know. Uh, one of them is this Bloom's taxonomy of uh, learning. The NCLEX exam is way different from your normal nursing uh, school examination. Okay, because the NCLEX exam operates on different questions and you're being tested on 
how you'll be able to answer the questions and the difficulty levels of the questions so that you reach the passing standard. So uh, remember that in the NCLEX, uh, some questions at the beginning of the exam of the computerized adaptive test, uh, some of these questions will be in the remembering level or understanding level. And then once you answer the questions correctly, uh, you, you go up to the application level and analysis level. So in the NCLEX, the questions that are really highly important for you to answer will be the application questions and analysis questions, because these are the kinds of questions that will test your ability to provide uh, safe nursing care to your patients, okay? So again, especially when you're um, uh, using different NCLEX review materials, you wanna make sure that the questions that you answer are on the application level and analysis uh, level so that you train yourself properly on critical thinking. So even if you read 10,000 questions, but if the questions are all very easy questions, it might not help you in the NCLEX. What's important is to, of course, know your basic concepts, but then really train yourself on how to be able to answer application and um, analysis question in the NCLEX, of course, okay? So just to let you know about this uh, Bloom's taxonomy of learning. Okay, so again, uh, for tonight, um, let's discuss some of the questions that I have prepared. I know that these are only a few questions, but then uh, the session becomes long, okay? So who are the people who are, who just logged in. So we have, hi Kim, nice to see you again. So Kim is here tonight as well. So these are some of my students in the online academy, okay? And then also we have, oh, Junona is, okay. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From Sh uh, Sharon here, I remember you, very good. And then um, you'll be learning a lot tonight about prioritization and delegation, okay? So there's one thing that I would like to discuss also with you. What is the approach for tonight's uh, session? It's going to be uh, uh, different types of uh, questions that you will encounter in the Inkflex, okay? One of this will be the, uh, I would call this segment now, the uh, story of four patients. The story of four patients. Now, wh why do I call this a story of four patients? Because in the Inkflex, one example or one type of questions that you will encounter on prioritization of client care will be you'll be given four patients and then you have to choose which one comes first or which patient requires the uh, most immediate attention so that's the uh, one of the uh, types of questions that you will encounter in the inflex the prioritization of client care wherein you'll be given four patients or let's say five patients or six patients and you have to think which one of these patients requires uh, immediate attention. So for tonight, I'll be giving you some questions, okay, on this uh, example of prioritization of client care. We're in the story of four patients and these four patients could be unstable, but you still have to choose which one is the most unstable patient. So that's the, uh, a little bit of the uh, tricky part of the impacts, okay, because everything can be correct, but you still have to choose which one or which client requires your attention or priority intervention. Okay, so let's proceed with the first question, everyone, for tonight. Okay, are you ready, everyone, to uh, put your answers and maybe some rationals? And let's see who gets the right answer for tonight. Okay, and of course, before we end for tonight, I'm going to be uh, giving you that one question that you have to answer. And then uh, whoever gives the answer correctly, then will win again. Okay, so we had a winner last time or last week. So let's see who wins tonight. Okay. So this is our first question for tonight. So you're going to be given four patients and then you have to prioritize which patient will come first, which one will be your priority in the situation. OK, so let's read the question, everyone, and let's see if you can answer this question. OK, so the nurse cares for four clients who recently arrived in the emergency room. Which of the following clients require priority nursing action? Okay, so letter A, a 40-year-old diabetic male client reporting thirst and increased urination in the past two hours. B, a 25-year-old female client requiring a follow-up appointment due to a recent diagnosis of stage 2 cervical carcinoma. Letter C, a 60-year-old pregnant female complaining of leg edema and has a blood pressure of 150 over 90 millimeters of mercury. Or letter D, a 35-year-old male client with my senior gravis reporting sudden weakness, drooling, and diarrhea. So which one do you think is the priority patient 
in this situation? Which patient comes first? Okay, is it the letter A, the one with diabetes? Letter B, the one with a stage two cervical cancer? Letter C, is it someone who is uh, a female uh, who is pregnant and having a high blood pressure? Or letter D, is it someone with mycenae gravis who has weakness, drooling, and diarrhea? Okay, so let's see who can give us the right answer to this question. Okay, now you may also uh, give me the rationale why is it that you choose your answer? Why is it that you chose a certain answer? What is the rationale for that? But again, let's dissect the question and find out the answer to this question, everyone. Okay, all right. So let's see what's the answer to this question. All right, so let's analyze the question. So you have four patients, it's very direct to the point. All you have to do is just really analyze each patient, which one comes first, okay? Who has the priority intervention? So letter A, do you think this is the answer everyone? And of course you have to use the process of elimination, okay? A diabetic male client reporting thirst and increased urination in the past two hours. Uh, remember, this is a diabetic patient, everybody, okay? Diabetic patient, okay uh thirst and increase urination can indicate uh, uh, uh an increase in the level of the blood sugar okay so it's a possibility that your patient has high blood sugar or maybe with further assessment this patient could be having having a diabetic ketoacidosis so we need more assessment with that but definitely a tells you that something is uh maybe wrong with the patient okay but remember this patient is diabetic but still Having increased urination and thirst can indicate an increase in the blood sugar, right? Okay, letter B, a 25-year-old uh, female client requiring a follow-up appointment. Okay, so this is a client who has stage 2 cancer, who needs an appointment. So how important is it that we schedule the appointment to this uh, client or patient? Letter C, someone with leg edema and has a blood pressure of 150 over 90. So the question there is, uh, is 150 over 90 normal for a pregnant woman, okay? Or is, is leg edema part of uh, being pregnant again also? Is that part of the symptom? And letter D, you have myasthenia gravis uh, reporting sudden weakness. Um, remember, in myasthenia gravis, you have weakness, okay? So that's part of the symptom, and we uh, give medications in order to manage the muscle weakness of patients with myasthenia gravis. So the question here, everyone, is which, which one do you think is the answer? So let's pick out some people, okay? So we have some people, okay. How come, okay. Okay, so a 60-year-old got pregnant. So we may have to correct that one, okay? Why is it the 60-year-old got pregnant? So let's just say it's a typographical error. So let's say it's a 30-year-old who got pregnant. Thank you very much for catching that up, okay? So 60-year-old female got pregnant, so thank you. So we'll change it up to 30 years old probably, okay? It's just really the typing that happened there. But then, uh, what do you think is the answer, everyone, looking at uh, A, B, C, or D? So that's really very funny, it's 60-year-old. But anyway, let's uh, proceed. Um, okay, so most of you answered letter D. Okay, so we have Lucky, she answered letter D. Pressel also answered letter D. We also have Nisha answered letter D. So the answer to this question is going to be, let me see. Okay, so the answer is actually letter D. Very good, everyone. Letter D is the answer, okay? So this is the answer because of what reason? A is a priority, you know that. Yeah, we need to further assess a patient with diabetes with uh, thirst and uh, of course, uh, increase urination, okay? However, if you look at letter D, everyone, uh, that is a patient with myasthenia gravis reporting sudden weakness, drooling, and diarrhea. What does it mean when you have a 35-year-old client with myasthenia gravis reporting sudden weakness, drooling, and diarrhea? What is that problem in myasthenia gravis? When the patient has sudden weakness, drooling, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, for example, what is that concept in myasthenia gravis? Okay, so what is that concept? And before anything else, remember this. You have all the ages there and you have the gender, but remember, okay, if in case you have that situation in the inflex, that is not something that you need to consider, the, especially the gender the male or the female, it doesn't have anything to do with your prioritization. It could be a distractor, okay? So the answer is going to be what? D, okay? So what crisis is present in letter D, everyone? If you go back to your uh, myasthenia gravis, 
In my senior graves, we give patients anti-cholinesterase medications, and there's anti-cholinesterase uh, anti medications or medications that will increase the level, increase the level of acetylcholine. However, if we overdose the uh, client with um, anti-cholinesterase medication, increasing the acetylcholine, the overdose stage leads to what you call cholinergic crisis, okay? And cholinergic crisis, which I also discuss in my book and in my videos, is a situation or condition wherein there is an overdose stage of anticholinesterase medication and it is characterized by severe muscle weakness as well as uh, gastrointestinal symptoms because this is uh, um, uh, under the parasympathetic uh, system, your anticholinesterase medications. So there's two crises in myasthenia gravis. You have your myasthenic crisis and your cholinergic crisis. Your myasthenic crisis is related to um, under dosage of medication, while your cholinergic crisis is related to overdosage, but both of them uh, present uh, respiratory distress and also severe muscle weakness. However, when you have a cholinergic crisis, um, this is an emergency because this leads to respiratory distress, okay, especially that there is severe muscle weakness. Your clue for letter D, why this is a priority is because just the word itself, sudden. Anything that is sudden or acute change may indicate something not good is going on in this client. And, and that's what I've been telling nurses. You really need to know your high priority conditions. You need to know the symptoms of high priority conditions. Why? Because in the NCLEX, they're not gonna give you the, the crisis or the emergency itself. You have to look at the symptoms and the laboratory values. And from that, you have to decide and analyze if there is an emergency going on, okay? So if you wanna learn more about cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis and all of the emergencies, uh, the priority conditions, uh, these are the emphasis that I put in my, uh, my videos, in my lectures. I wanna make sure that nurses know the pathophysiology, you know the symptoms of high priority conditions because in the inflex that will help you pick out which one is the priority, okay? Uh, remember in this question, letter A could be uh, something that will worry the nurse as well, but then letter D comes first, okay? So that's the answer, everyone. Thank you very much, okay? Especially, yes, uh, somebody mentioned the word sudden. So that's kind of like your clue, all right? Or for example, uh, it says excessive also, for example, okay? So let's proceed. Um, next, we have another question. All right. So let's continue our segment. So we call this segment the uh, the story of four patients. Thank you very much for looking at the questions. All right. So we have again another four patients, and let's see which patient will be your priority. Okay. All right. So a telephone triage nurse receives the following calls from the following clients. Okay which uh, client requires the most immediate attention? A, a 25-year-old 25 male client who reports an inflammatory cyst in the left eye upon waking up in the morning, okay? Uh, letter B, a 45-year-old female client with a newly applied cast on the left arm complaining of itchiness and warm sensation. C, a 49-year-old male client who is sneezing and coughing for four days already, or D, a 65-year-old female client who reports floating spots in vision after a recent field trip. Okay, so who do you think requires the most immediate attention? Someone who needs to do the to see the physician right away. Okay, so is it A, B, C, or D? So which patient should see a physician as soon as possible, okay? Is it someone with an eye problem or is it someone with, uh, with uh, complaints of itchiness and warm sensation? Remember, it's a newly applied cast, letter C, uh, someone who has been sneezing and coughing for four days already or D, someone with floating spots, okay? So we're getting some answers there. We have Marella, she said letter D, okay. Someone answered letter B, okay. Now, let's go over to the question, okay. Now, so the question here is this. Okay, 
So what is your rationale for picking your answers, everyone? So can you give me your rationale why you picked letter D maybe or letter B? What do you think is going on with that patient? Okay, recent trip and floating spots, okay. Um, uh, letter A, okay. All right, so let's have the answer to this question, everyone. The answer to this question is going to be letter Okay, are you ready everybody? The answer to this question? The answer to this question is going to be letter. Yes, it's going to be letter D. A 65 year old female client who reports floating spots in vision after a recent field trip. What do you think is going with, on with that patient? Why that patient has, uh, um, why that patient is going to be your priority? Okay, or why is it letter B? Okay, or why not uh, A? Why not B? So letter A, you have to remember that that is a uh, assist in the left eye upon waking up in the morning. And of course, uh, that requires, of course, uh, uh, seeing a physician probably in the urgent care clinic just to receive some medication. So maybe it is a sty that requires erythromycin antibiotic, for example. Uh, letter B is a newly applied cast on the left arm. Remember that um, this is one thing you have to remember in the inquest that it is not a priority if you know that the manifestation is part of the procedure or condition okay with letter b everyone you have your itchiness and you have your warm sensation that could be part of the uh, uh, reaction or response to the cast application especially the warm sensation if the material being used is the plaster of paris which has to uh, uh, has to dry okay so warm sensation is kind of like expected okay but if the patient, for example, says severe tingling and numbness, paralysis, unable to wiggle the fingers, okay, then that uh, signifies uh, tight application of the cast. And in that situation, what we need to do is to seek the, uh, you know, the, uh, of course, intervention from a physician because that is serious. That's a neurovascular compromise. Uh, letter C, coughing and sneezing for four days already, okay, that may be a concern. Well, if you change the situation having a fever of 102.8, for example, then that's a different story, okay? But then letter C just tells you sneezing and coughing for four days already. So, but if you compare that with letter D, letter D is uh, priority. Why? Because letter D can lead to blindness. What's going on with letter D, everyone? Okay, retinal detachment. Very good, my mind. It's retinal detachment, especially if it's painless, you have floating spots, you have floaters, you have flashes of lights, for example, or the veil-like sensation, for example, and it's an emergency. If we don't do anything with this retinal detachment, the client can lose the vision in 24 hours, okay? So that requires really an intervention from the physician, okay? So that would be, of course, retinal detachment, uh, letter C, sneezing and coughing for four days already. Something might be going on, but again, among all, among all of these uh, four patients that you think are are have problems going on, you have to choose the number one that is the priority. And again, we go back. What I would like you to do is when you're reading your book, I would like you to mark the high priority conditions and you need to memorize and remember the uh, signs and symptoms because that will help you a lot in the NCLEX, okay? Know your priority conditions. I have a list of those high priority conditions actually. Okay, and I will give you those uh, probably by next week or you can send me an email on what are examples of high priority conditions. For example, diabetic ketoacidosis, myasthenic crisis, cholinergic crisis, abruptia placenta, uh, cord prolapse, okay, autonomic dysreflexia. So if you have all of these high priority conditions and uh, you know the signs and symptoms, that will help you in the NCLEX, okay? All right, so let's proceed to our third question, everyone. Okay, so are you still doing good, everybody? All right, so we will now have your, okay, again, another four patients again, everyone. Okay, so let's see if you can answer this question. Okay, so let's have these four questions again. So the nurse in the medical surgical unit is conducting walking rounds after an end of shift report. Which of the following clients require priority attention? A, a 32-year-old male patient was warm and tender left leg due to thrombophlebitis. B, a 30-year-old female client with a head injury complaining of excessive urination in the last two hours. Letter C, 
a 44-year-old female client who complains of breast tenderness that started with her menstrual period, or D, a 50-year-old male client who complains of non-productive cough after taking enalapril. So which one here requires priority intervention? Okay, is it A, B, C, or D, right? Which patient here will be the first one that you have to attend or to further assess? Okay, which patient? There A, 32-year-old male client, warm and tender left leg, B, head injury patient. And again, what I'm, I'm going to tell you is this in the NCLEX, you have to use the process of elimination and you really have to look at the question and think, what do you think is going on with your patient? And then you also have to go back to your physiology. Okay, so which one requires priority intervention, everyone, or attention? All right, so let's see. Everybody, before I give you the, the final answer to this one, I would like to you to consider uh, some of these aspects. Uh, letter A, so you have warm and tender left leg due to thrombophlebitis. So remember that if you have a warm and tender um, area in the left leg, that's part of the symptom of thrombophlebitis, right? So why do you have to really be worried about that? You have to kind of like further assess that, of course, but then there could be a better answer. Let there be someone with a head injury complaining of excessive urination the last two hours. Okay. Remember, when you have head injury, what gland can be accidentally damaged as well? That would be your pituitary gland, your uh, posterior pituitary gland. And what can happen if you damage or if we have damage in the pituitary gland? So letter B is a little bit uh, something that you need to think about. Okay, letter C. Uh, someone who complains of breast tenderness has started with a menstrual period. There are some breast disorders that causes pain during the menstrual period and that is considered to be part of the symptom. It is something worth looking uh, into, but then again, you have to choose which one comes first here, okay? Letter D, uh, a 50-year-old male client who complains of non-productive cough after taking enalapril. Is that a priority? We all know that enalapril, for example, the brand name is Vasotec, is a medication, an ACE inhibitor that causes dry cough as a side effect. Of course, we need to attend to that. We need to make sure that we uh, assess the patient. But the question again is who comes here first, okay? Uh, we will eliminate letter A. A is eliminated. I'm telling you that right now. Letter C is eliminated as well. So between B and uh, between B and let's say letter D, which one do you think is your priority? We eliminate B and D, okay? So the answer to this question is going to be letter. Yes, so letter B is the answer to this question, everyone. Someone with a head injury, number one is a head injury, so that's serious, right? Okay, and then at the same time, you have excessive urination. So what do you, why do you think letter B is the answer, everyone? Head injury, but what is the relationship between excessive urination and head injury? What is the relationship to that? Uh, in the NCLEX, one of the most favorite conditions in the questions will be diabetes insipidus. Okay, if you know diabetes insipidus, everyone, is something that happens after a cranial fracture or a head injury that results into the damage of the pituitary gland, right? So uh, in this condition or in this situation, letter B, it doesn't really tell you directly that the patient is having diabetes insipidus, but just, just uh, the complaint of the patient, which is excessive urination, you have to look into that especially if you check the urine output and it is excessive, then that could be an indication of diabetes insipidus, which is a uh, serious complication of, uh, of uh, head injury, okay? So the answer is going to be letter what? Letter B, okay, so Zora said, wow, yes. So congratulations for those people who got the right answer in this question, okay? So we have people who got it right, okay? So congratulations, okay. So letter D, okay. Letter D can be, um, okay, can be a concern, yes. But then maybe you said, oh, cough, yes, of course. It's a side effect, okay. We will treat that, okay. But then remember, it's expected side effect of enalapril, 
okay? And you don't have any other assessment findings that tells you this patient is unstable. The most unstable and serious patient is letter B. So again, go back to the signs and symptoms, all right? But again, when answering these kinds of questions in the influx, it takes practice. It takes practice, okay? So where do you start? Just know again, uh, remember this, if it's part of the side effect of the medication, and, and unless the patient is not in danger, that can wait a little bit. In this situation, letter B will be the answer, all right? So I hope you got the answer right on that, everyone. That was a little bit uh, difficult, okay? All right, so are you ready for our next, uh, yeah, letter B, the word excessive. Yes, the word excessive. When you answer the question in the end class, you really have to look each word use the process of elimination don't jump okay my advice to students all the time when they answer in the class is slow down make sure that you really understand the question okay and give it your best shot and try to find out what's going on in every item and then you look back at the situation again and ask yourself is it answering the question okay is it answering what is being asked in the situation and of course all of these guys you need a very strong content and then, of course, you need to practice more, okay? So that's understandable, everyone. Always remember, have a strong foundation of high priority conditions, all right? Okay, so yes, it was a very tough question, everyone, all right? So let's proceed. But then, those are the kinds of questions that will make you pass your influx, all right? So keep on watching my videos because at least you learned something from it, right? Okay. So now we're done with all of those prioritization questions, guys. Uh, now it's time for our delegation questions. So we're done with the story for patient segment. Now we will have your delegation questions. So are you ready for delegation, everyone? Okay. Are you ready for delegation questions? And remember that diabetes insipidus is a reduced production of ADH, okay? Or the lack of ADH or antidiuretic hormone. And that's why there's increased urination. Uh, syndrome of inappropriate, okay, um, uh, or ADH release is more of uh, water retention, which is the opposite, okay, which can also happen when the client has a head injury. So both ways you can have diabetes insipidus or you can have your SIADH as well, all right? So very important is to really know your content, everyone. So let's go to your delegation questions, everyone. So let's see who can answer this question on delegation. Okay, all right, so let's see. The charge nurse in the critical care unit is assigning tasks to the unlicensed assisted personnel or UAP. Which of the following clients can be delegated to the UAP? A, a client who needs assistance in ambulation after a two month stroke rehabilitation program. B, a client who needs to be fed after undergoing esophagoscopy procedure. C, a client with urinary tract infection who needs irrigation of the Foley catheter, or D, a client who needs vital signs monitoring after a valve replacement procedure. Okay, so this is a delegation question in the INCLEX. So again, what are the kind of uh, um, tasks that we delegate to the UAP? These tasks must be simple, they must be routine, uh, it doesn't uh, require complex uh, critical thinking. Okay, so most of you answered actually what? Okay, so we have Babita. Babita said letter A, all right? Okay, Kim said letter A as well. Okay, Pratiksa, okay, also letter A, very good. We have Fidel, Loretta, Fidel, also letter A, very good. Okay, so most of you seem uh, seems like most of you answered letter D, everyone, okay? So I'm going to tell you that in this situation, the answer is going to be, yes, of course, everyone, you got it right. It's going to be letter, okay? Letter A is the answer. Very good, everybody. You got the answer right. Rhoda, also, you got it right. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, guys. Now, letter A is the answer. Why? Because this is a stable patient. That's the one thing. So you have to ask yourself, is this within the scope of practice of the UAP? You just have to go back and think of, of CNAs, okay? Or UAP, can they ambulate patients? Yes, but then this is a stable patient. Two-month stroke rehabilitation program, 
by that time we can consider the patient is already stable so ambulation is okay there with b is not uh, good because even those uh, uaps can feed a patient but someone who just underwent esophagoscopy procedure may have issues with the gag reflex and the swallowing and that can lead to aspiration so we need uh, a licensed nurse for that then let us see we have um, irrigation of the Foley catheter is not the uh, is not a function or responsibility or within the scope of practice of uh, UAP and and letter D of course definitely vital signs monitoring with letter D that really requires the registered nurse because of the word monitoring assessing interpreting uh, data uh, that would be the registered registered nurse okay the only time that UAP can take the vital signs uh, that would be only for routine uh, routine procedures or routine situations or uh, stable patients as well okay but anytime your patient is unstable the assessment and the um, and the vital signs measurement should be uh, with the registered nurse as much as possible or it is a requirement definitely okay so good job here everybody okay so you do have these questions in the inklex which are directed at point okay so let's have our last question for tonight okay so all right so yes may so may said doesn't need any judgment or critical thinking okay because when you delegate a task to the uap it has to be something that is more routine it doesn't require critical thinking all right so very good so non-complex tasks only very good so let's proceed all right so the last uh, question that we have for tonight is again uh, another one is delegation okay so so delegation always to do uh, the rule or the scope of practice okay of nurses okay so let's proceed all right so let's have this question everyone all right so the charge nurse okay is working together with a licensed practical nurse and unlicensed uh, assisted personnel or uap in the medical surgical unit which of the following items is an appropriate delegation of task a asking the uap to change the dressing of a client with a right elbow skin tear b requesting the lpn to monitor the blood pressure of a client with intracranial pressure monitoring okay C, instructing the UAP to remove the Foley catheter of a client with neurogenic bladder, or, or D, assigning the LPN to obtain the client's heart rate for a newly prescribed antihypertensive drug. Okay, so which one is an appropriate delegation in this situation, everyone? Okay, which one is appropriate delegation? Okay. Is it A, B, C, or D? Okay, A, B, C, or D. All right. Okay, so let's dissect the question, everyone. You have to ask yourself, okay? Larry A, is the UAP allowed to change the dressing of a client with the right elbow skin tear? Do you think that is within the scope of practice of the UAP to change dressing? You have to ask yourself, is that a complex task? Especially when you change the dressing and it says sterile dressing. Is that something that you will want to delegate to the UAP? Okay. Is it within the scope of practice of the UAP to change the sterile, sterile dressing? Won't care everyone, won't care, all right? Now, let it be requesting the LPN to monitor the blood pressure of a client with intracranial pressure monitoring. Of course, let it be is a no because let it be is uh, an unstable patient. Okay, the registered nurse is not supposed to delegate an unstable patient to an LPN. Never delegate evaluation, never delegate assessment, never uh, delegate teaching to an LPN. Okay, all right, especially with intracranial pressure monitoring. Okay, that's a delicate situation there condition let us see instructing the uap to remove the foley catheter of a client with neurogenic bladder is that within the scope of practice of the uap okay so the number one question that you will always have in the inklex when you delegate is this it's not only about being a stable or unstable patient the first thing you have to ask is 
is it within the scope of practice if it's not within the scope of practice eliminate that item right away once the item once it is not within the scope of practice of the uap or the lpn do not choose that option if you see the word iv antibiotics for lpn what's the point that's wrong okay so no discussion anymore it's not within the scope of practice all right so let us see is it within the scope of practice of the uap to remove a foley no i don't think so but larry d is it within the scope of practice it's all about scope of practice and then you ask yourself stable or unstable patient okay so if it's unstable then you don't delegate even though it's within the scope of practice so here is larry d within the scope of practice because that's the first question that you will ask when you're delegating and then next question is is this a stable patient and last question is does this person have the skill to take care of this patient what if the patient for example is spanish speaking and this person for example there's a barrier in communication then maybe even though it's within the scope of practice stable patient but still it may not be the best patient to assign because the person is spanish speaking only so is larry d within the scope of practice okay that's the question do lvns and lpns check heart rates if there's a new order of a drug or medication before you give the medication just to obtain the heart rate okay just to obtain the heart rate so the answer is of course okay lpn gives oral medications it's within your scope of practice you know lvns give new drugs right okay but if the question in the inflex is assessing the response to the medication or evaluating the response to the medication especially if it's a high alert medication then maybe that's not the answer because that's more of assessment okay so lvns can only get vital signs but the interpretation of vital signs the analysis of vital signs will be the registered nurse okay so the answer to this question is going to be everyone is going to be letter d yes because lpns obtain heart rate okay or even auscultation uh, letter a changing the sterile dressing i'm sorry but changing the sterile dressing or the dressing is the uh, the job of or the scope of practice for that is the lvn or the lpn and the registered nurse okay so especially when something sterility is involved in a procedure okay sterility guys uh, infection control especially sterility like wound care for example that has to be the licensed nurse okay so who got the answer for number five everybody okay so we have babita also she got uh number five is letter d very good okay so yes chinona said it is a challenging question and that's how we learn you know you keep on answering questions and then uh, you learn from that and then when you get into the in class you're like oh yeah so i learned the principle about this so don't forget our number one lesson for tonight is when you're delegating scope of practice okay and sometimes scope of practice uh, varies from state to state okay but in the NCLEX NCLEX knows that nationally there is uh, variations in the scope of practice and that's why they will put questions there wherein you will be able to answer okay all right so so I will never forget this question yes of course always scope of practice all right and then after scope of practice you ask yourself is this a stable or unstable patient and then is it within the skill of this person all right so it's all about the scope of practice everyone so there you go everybody we had five questions for tonight so before we end for tonight we're gonna have your uh, your contest okay your contest for tonight and let's see who will win for tonight okay who will win for tonight do you think our contest okay uh who's gonna win the 90 day free access online and class review okay so but before that i'm gonna plug a little bit about my online and class academy everyone um i have uh, students who enrolled recently and thank you very much everybody and then i'm so busy responding to their emails and questions and some students actually uh, sent me an email and they're very thankful that uh, um, that they are happy that they're learning a lot in the online and class academy and uh, Babita sent me an email and she's very thankful that she's learning about culture diet, for example. So my online NCLEX Academy is very comprehensive. Um, if you graduated 20 years ago, um, it is something, uh, it, it, it is a resource for you. I've been teaching uh, for a long time 
and I've been developing curricula in schools and uh, I basically know uh, what students need to know and I do teach students right now as well and they're passing the NCLEX so I'm really very happy when students pass the NCLEX and of course the most important thing guys I've always told you is to have a strong content do not work backwards strong content and then practice test taking skills okay and we do have a group coaching call scheduled for enrolled students it's going to be on may 20 next week so uh join me in that group coaching call we'll be uh, talking more about test taking strategies okay now let's proceed okay so we have another one it's going to be my book and again thank you very much for those people who has been buying my books i've seen uh an increase in the number of people buying the book thank you very much everyone uh and thank you also for all the 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 uh recommendations that you're doing and it's helping out students uh thank you very much for for getting this book in amazon everybody thank you very much for that okay so for tonight, before we end everyone, I'm going to ask the question and let's see who can answer this question. So if you're already enrolled in the online NCLEX Academy, what's going to happen is we're going to extend your, um, your enrollment for another 90 days if you win. Or one of the options is you can transfer this 90 day online NCLEX to anyone that you know, international. Okay, so let's see who will win tonight. Are you ready, everybody? So again, Okay, so the question is, remember earlier I discussed about myasthenia gravis, everyone. And in myasthenia gravis, my question was, okay, my question was, um, it's all about the muscle weakness, uh, the myasthenia crisis, and cholinergic crisis. So the question for tonight is this, right? The answer to the question is one word, and it starts with letter T. Letter T, okay, T, all right. Yes, in time. So the question is, and this will always be in the NCLEX, what is the antidote for myasthenic crisis? What is the antidote for myasthenic crisis? Let's see. Okay. Myasthenic crisis, what is the antidote? It starts with letter T, everyone. What medication? And let's see who wins this. All right. What is your antidote for myasthenic crisis? For your cholinergic crisis, the antidote is going to be uh, atropine sulfate, which is sympathetic anticholinergic. So the answer is going to be very good, Aurora. That's correct. You are the one who won our, um, our uh, contest tonight. Aurora, thank you very much. Congratulations, you won. Everybody, can you please congratulate Aurora? She said Tensilon, although the answer is Tensilon test is a test for my senior gravis, but uh, the diagnostic test, but having the word Tensilon, that would be good enough. Okay, so Tensilon is the answer. Okay, so Aurora, is that confirmed? You are the one who won? Yes or no? Yes, so Aurora is the one who won. So Aurora, what you can do is you can send us an email or message us and give us your email address so that we can enroll you in the program. And you can also transfer this to another person that you know. Okay, so congratulations. So again, everyone, thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, thank you very much, everybody, uh, for um, for joining us here. Okay, and I will see you again next week. It's going to be Wednesday, uh, Thursday again. Uh, we're going to have your Facebook Live. I'm going to prepare more questions for you, and of course, we're going to have another contest, and we'll see what kind of prize we're going to give away. And also, share this Facebook Live with your friends, everybody. I would appreciate that. Uh, so that your friends will learn more about uh, nursing prioritization and delegation so congratulations okay so guys thank you very much i will not be here without you and thank you very much for uh really uh uh attending this facebook live tonight everybody okay so again thank you thank you thank you have a good night everyone